Welcome to the June 17th meeting of the Charter Review Committee. <coughs> um, could I please have a motion to approve the agenda that's been presented? So moved. Was that you, Phil? Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Catherine, thank you. Any changes, discussion on the agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we have an agenda. All right, that's good. That's a good start. Um, can I have a motion to approve the minutes from June the 3rd? So moved. Thank you, Wayne. Is there a second? Blair, I said thank second. you very much. Um, any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Um, opposed? All right, that's unanimous. I want to do a welcome and a shout out. Hello, Councilman Joe Holloway. It's good to see you. Thank you for coming. And our very loyal and steadfast alternate number one, John Rankin. John, it's very good to see you. Sharon Morris, it is nice to see you again. And again, we extend our condolences, and but it's, it's great to see you. Absolutely. Um, so with that, let's get started. And the first thing on the agenda is if you'll turn to section 413, at the end of our last meeting, we spent a nice long discussion on that. We had uh, Mr. Wilbur draft new language, and the new language was basically taking out the middle sentence. So, Mr. Wilbur, I might ask if you would read the proposed change in full for the committee. You want me to read the sentence that's coming out or just the clean? The clean the version, clean. yes, please. Okay. Administrative appointment, section 413. The county executive shall appoint a single officer to head each department or agency of the executive branch, the director of administration, and the assistant director of administration, and may remove the same at his discretion and shall also appoint the deputy directors of each such department or agency. The county executive shall also appoint the members of all boards and commissions in the executive branch, except as provided, otherwise provided for by law, subject to confirmation by the council as required by section 315 of this charter. All employees of the executive branch, other than those specifically provided for in this charter or the code of Wicomico County, shall be appointed and removed by the heads of the several agencies of the county government in accordance with the provisions of the county personnel law. Thank you. Um, I think we had done, and I'll ask the committee, and I should have looked at it, I think we had approved this with the caveat that we wanted to hear the language. Um, so I don't think we need a motion or anything because I think we already voted on this. Um, that said, now there's the clean version. Um, again, we removed that middle sentence of section 413. And that's what we asked Paul to do was to come back with that clean version. Okay, Paul, thank you. Any questions on the clean version? All right, thank you everyone. We were, um, according to where I have us left off, we were, we had left off at um, section 414 and we were on letter C. Mm -hmm. um, and this had to do with, um, <laughs> we learned, and I, I chuckle just because some of these things make us chuckle. Um, the county executive, we learned last meeting, there were actually people who would leave the employ of the county government who were department heads who the county council was not then notified. Um, so we were um, discussing when our time ran out the last time if we wanted to, my notes kind of say when a vacancy occurs, the county executive must notify the county council in writing within 10 days. That's where we were, but I don't believe we'd had a motion. I think we called, I think I called it at that point. Uh, <coughs> apologies, I just see um, Councilman Bill McCain has entered the room. Bill, thank you very much for being here. Yes, sir, thank you. So, um, we'll certainly entertain a motion if anybody wants to make a motion. 
be happy to make the motion um, that the county executive must notify um, the county council in writing within 10 days of a vacancy. Of a department head? Department head, yes. Sorry, I couldn't remember everything. No worries. And are you proposing that that new language be an additional sentence at the end of section C? To have a letter D. Correct. Okay. Oh, you want, we want a letter D instead of an addition. Okay. Thank you. Is that going to be 10 calendar days or 10 working days? Should we maybe clarify that? Once in a while, we'll see something that's Fair enough. May I make an amendment you may. that it would be 10 working days? Okay. Thank you. There's a motion to add a letter D. Um, is there a second to that? I'll second. Thank you, David. Um, any discussion? <coughs> That's the motion's now open for discussion. Okay, hearing none, we'll call for a vote on that motion to add letter D. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that passes unanimously. Catherine, thank you for the motion. Um, we're now, hey everybody, we are on Article 5. Round of applause, we're getting there, we're moving right along. Um, Article 5 has to do with administrative organization. And as usual, I'll just kind of shout down the sections until I see someone who has a point to make. Section 501, Section 502, Section 503, 502C. Yep, 502C. Catherine, please. I would like to add for 502C um, that we include all the protected classes under federal law um, that we need to include um, that uh, no such suspension or removal may be ordered because of race, national origin, religious opinion, or religious affiliation. Rate and uh, just going back, I'm sorry. Uh, race is already there. Um, race, color, national origin, religion, sex, age, or disability. So I guess we, I would like to add sex, age, or disability. Is that a motion? Is that a motion? I'd like to make a motion to add <laughs> sex, age, or disability um, so we include all the protected classes under federal law. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? Second. Uh, who was that? Sonia? Yes. Thank you. Now let's have any discussion that we might want to have on that. Michelle, it looks like you're lowering your microphone. Good idea, but I think Mr. Wilbur or someone should probably make certain that this isn't already covered or we're not going to be challenged on. I'm certain that, that it's all should already be covered anyway. It should, but it's not stated and it's been updated. Mm -hmm. yep. I think it's a good idea. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Sh uh, Sharon, yes, please. Can we just say that's covered under federal law so that it doesn't have to continue because it's going to be added to as time yeah. changes. That's true, that too. Cover everything. Yeah. Protected, what did you say? Protected that's classes protected under classes. Uh, under federal law? Can Whoever is speaking, can you put your microphone down? Sorry. Yes, that would take care of anything else that would come up. Admit. So I would be happy to amend my motion, uh, except that no such suspension or removal may be ordered. Be, uh, how am I going to phrase that? For those protected classes under federal law? <laughs> How would you state that? <laughs> Paul, do you have any thoughts on that? You could, you could put including but not limited to after that and then string out what we have here. <clears throat> Should we include state law as well? There may be an instance where the state of Maryland might adopt protection that is not necessarily in the federal code. True, too. <laughs> so, may I make another amendment? You may. It's all. Hey, let's do this. Um, withdraw your first motion, please. Thank you. Um, let's start with a new motion. Yep. May I start yeah, again? of course. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will go back. County executive uh, may be suspended or removed from office upon the written order of the county executive. executive except that no such suspension or removal may be ordered, um, including but not limited to those protected classes under federal and state law. Thank you. Is there a second? 
Second. Who said that? Sonia? Oh, Thank I'm you. I'm sorry. No worries. Thank you. I know these chairs are really comfortable. They are, right? It's easy to fall. <laughs> well, Phil knows that. Phil's not in one of the comfortable oh, chairs there tonight. <laughs> um, thank you, Sonia. Is there discussion on this motion? Okay, let's call for a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that's unanimous. Thank you, Catherine. Anything else under 502? All right, let's head into 503. Um, are, there's, yes. it, there's a reference uh, um, in, to the, what the council asked about, on, into 17, section 503, airport. Should airport be an official department of the county? Um, and I, I had some thoughts on that. Um, and I'll qualify by saying that my former partner, when I was in, when I was working, was Ed Kramer, and so I had not certainly intimate knowledge of what was going on at the airport commission, but no, probably more than the average there. Um, in in my opinion. It seems to be working well the way it is, and and I say that I, I can't honestly tell you where it is today. I, I don't know, but what the way I always perceived it was that there were individuals who had an interest in that subject, and and with that particular interest brought to the table gave them a better perspective because that is a somewhat of a unique situation. The other thing that I was thinking about was that. That is not just, it, it is part of Wicomico County, but it is clearly a development, uh, aids to the development of the whole lower shore from Sussex County, you know, all the way down. Uh, you know, there are three or four counties that are, are they're clearly are affected by that. So it, it seems to me that its interests go beyond just Wicomico County borders, and therefore I, that's my thought. Thank you, Matt. Um, the, the airport commission is now only an advisory board. It no longer runs the airport. Uh, the airport staff reports to the county executive. Um, and in my opinion, the airport should be included as a county department. So if I'm hearing you correctly, Wayne, I'm <coughs> Nick taking no sides at this point, the setup that Matt just referenced is not necessarily the setup any longer. And so the airport is the airport manager, correct? Is the title reports to the county executive in the same way that human resources, finance, et cetera. Okay. So you would advocate in favor of creating, would we call it the department of the airport <laughs> or the airport department or uh, Department of Aviation. Department. There you go. We have a couple of council people here are certainly welcome to offer an opinion. You're also certainly welcome to take a pass on offering an opinion. <laughs> if you have an opinion, there's a microphone. <laughs> if you want to sit there and enjoy yourselves, you're welcome to do that too. Hold on. If you're going to speak, thank you. Councilman McCain. Or just, not, just not having the luxury of having it in front of us at the moment. Could you read that actual uh, clause as it's, as it's currently written? Yes, you know, absolutely. Um, this is under departments, and it, the administrative organization shall, except as otherwise provided herein, consist of the following departments. One, Department of Law. Two, Department of Human Resources. Three, Department of Finance. Four, Department of Planning, Zoning, and Community Development. Five, Department of Public Works. Six, Department of Recreation, Parks, and Tourism. Seven, Department of Corrections. Eight, Department of Information Services. Nine, Department of Emergency Services. Ten, Wicomico Partnership for Families and Children. And those are the only ones. So what, Mr. what Wayne is suggesting is, again, the Department of the Airport, but that sounds a little... <laughs> Sounds a little weird. I don't know. It's, Phil? It's yes, sir. Official name now, Wicomico Regional Airport, Wicomico County, or I is think Ocean City still in it? or It depends on what day and what Google search you use. <laughs> um, yeah, Salisbury, Wicomico, Ocean City, 
However, the only people who have any skin in the game is Wicomico County. Um, we pay for the airport. We could argue about that if you want to. We could argue about what? Worcester County, at my request, put $300,000 into building the, the air traffic control center, and that's when Ocean City was added to the name. Right, right. I, it doesn't make any difference. To Understood. Me. But, I thought but since then, time, they haven't, used to call it they haven't contributed any funding. I, I know. Right. I'm not sure whether they've been asked. but They've been asked. Okay. I, and it's also... So what is the real name? If we yeah, want to yeah, yeah. add number 11, <laughs> you tell us what the name is, and we can add number 11. Mm -hmm. I would just call it the Department of Aviation. Yeah. yeah. But does the airport encompass that whole area out there? Um, Salisbury Walk. I mean, like the uh, uh, industrial park. Pardon me. Industrial yeah, park. Yeah, the industrial park. Now, there's some things out there that are clearly air aviation, but yeah. the the, um, uh, the 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 dog and cat pound. I forget what you call it. Humane Society is out there, and that's certainly not aviation. Yeah, no, you know, you, the Salisbury Regional Airport. You know, let let. I'm going to suggest, and we're going to remember what our friend Walter Olson, this sounds like a good workshop um, item, Wayne, if you might, with the group's approval. Um, this is a big decision. There are these regional economic considerations. Um, again, I'm looking to my two county council members who are somewhat mute, I think, on this, and I, respectfully, that's okay. Um, Wayne, I'm going to ask you to do a little research, and I know we're unique. Not every other county has a municipal airport under its jurisdiction, but maybe um, coming up with a name. I mean, we can sit here and scratch our heads. But what? I, Phil? Yes. With all due respect. Yes. I move that we add number 11, the Department of Aviation. And the airport would fall under I that? Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second that we create the Department of Aviation. Um, now we're going to have discussion on that. If I read that, all the other 10, 10 departments for me are pretty clear as to what their responsibility is. And if I see Department of Aviation, I would say we would need to clarify what falls under the Department of Aviation because it's not crystal clear to me that the airport falls under the Department of Aviation. I'm just, I'm just talking out loud here. I'm not opposing what you're saying and proposing, but I think we'd have to define a little bit what the Department of Aviation is and what it's responsible for. Who am I looking at? Sonia. So okay. we never refer to anything when we talk about the airport. We just say the airport. We never say the Department of Aviation. Correct. So we would be creating something here. Because it, it does sound simple. It sounds simple and clean and everything like that. It sounds also kind of self-explanatory. But if it's not something that we use, I, I get it. But Sharon? Um, I think going back to Wayne's addition of the airport is probably the simplest thing because if you look next in order to create or merge or abolish an office or a department you have it takes legislation we could add um, we could add number 11 that the Salisbury Wacomico Ocean City Regional Airport be added as a department as it stands now and it could be changed but the but um, to, to Mr. Tillman's point the airport originally, back in the 40s, was also funded by the city of Salisbury. And it was Wicomico who continued to fund it. And then to when Mr. Tillman was a council person, he, he as he That's already said, he asked Worcester County. And for that $300,000, we changed the name. And we had a uh, council person from Worcester County who was Church. Louise Golius. Louise Golius. First and, then, and then, Bud yeah, and then Bud's Church, who sat on the commission. So that's what they got for their $300,000 plus the advertisement of Ocean City. Um, so I think, uh, as, as Wayne suggested, to add number 11 and just add the airport as a department as it's currently named identifies it. So you, you're suggesting that number 11 would simply read Salisbury, Wicomico, Ocean City Regional Airport. Yep. 
we don't need to call it the Department of, okay? Um, um, what's I'll that? Draw my motion. I was going to say thank you, thank you, Phil, Julie. Let let me get a motion on the floor, or do you want to discuss before? What do you? Whatever works for you. Let me throw this out first. Okay. Um, there is a tremendous amount of um, outside influence on the airport. <clears throat> the federal money that comes, you know, that you can't have an airport unless so many things are, are taken care of by the federal government. Then you've got the State Department of Aviation. I'm not sure which state I'm in, what they call it, but um, the state has a lot of requirements as well. Um, then you've got, I think the MPO might have a little bit of influence in that as well. So there's a, there's a lot of depth. The Charter Committee can certainly suggest or recommend that we add the department, but there is, this is a very complex. Uh, it's not just adding a line. It is no. extremely complex, and I know that from both of course. working in aviation in Virginia and being on the airport advisory commission of uh, which is now the Southern Delaware or Coastal Delaware Airport. If the air, if the Sharon. Is in the county's budget. Sharon, you said mic a little bit closer. Microphone. If, if the airport's still in the county's budget, then any county department is appearing in the county's budget. So that's why I say it's easy to, to add it because it already is funded as a county department. So putting it here in writing only identifies it for those purposes. And to your very good point, Julie, I might look at the other departments and say there's federal funding for rec parks and tourism. There's federal funding for public works. It, all of these departments they are. Will, they will take it back in a heartbeat if you don't follow those regulations to a T. But and we and, we we do a very good job of that. <laughs> and changing and again changing the name might not. Okay, um, Sharon, you made a motion, right? Well, no, Phil withdrew his motion. Mm -hmm. Would you like to make a motion? Yield. Uh, yield. Oh, I make a motion that we add. Uh, I, actually, Wayne made it, <laughs> but I'll make it. Uh, I make a motion that we add number eleven. Salisbury Wicomico Ocean City Regional Airport as a county department. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Only yes. thing is, is that, the, is that the name? We, that the that name. is the official name? Okay. That's a $300,000 name. <laughs> 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 Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor of adding number 11, Salisbury Wacomico Ocean City Regional Airport as a department of the county, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Good discussion. Um, section B. Section C. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. I, I had a question. I, why are some departments actually get a paragraph or two or three, and other departments are st strictly named and there's nothing on there? Are, do they, are they? Should there not be a, a, some sort of formality, even if you said these the following are the undescribed departments? will follow these basic rules, whatever they are. I mean, is it necessary? I mean, it, does it add anything to the? So to your point, the only one that I see in this section of the charter that goes down that road, the only two are Department of Public Works and Department of Law. There aren't, all the other departments don't have any lines. Uh, 600, uh, Department Human Resources that's, is six. Well, we're at, it's under 600. Okay. And but that's. You know, the ones that don't are not don't have a paragraph are departments of rec, recreation, parks and tourism, Department of Corrections, Department of Information Service. Well, Department of Emergency Services. I hear you for consistency purposes, but that's a rabbit hole. <laughs> if we can go down it. Um, are you suggesting, let's say, Department of Finance? I, I guess what I'm 
saying is if we why are some things in the charter and some not? I, I don't know the I have no idea. <laughs> is there a reason? Is there if is if are there reasons that some of these others should or shouldn't have? I mean, is it should it be? Just, I don't know. If there's. I, I guess I don't really understand the purpose and how some of these got in here and some of them didn't. Neither do I. Does anybody in this room have any <laughs> understanding of why? Sorry. Well, the question is, <clears throat> under Section 503 and throughout 500, if I'm hearing Matt correctly, all these now 11 departments, only two of them have explicit additional information under the county charter relative to those departments. Three of them. And the other ones just don't. They're just named as county departments. The Department of Law is, is named specifically because it takes a different level of education and the criteria are different. The Department of Public Works has to be an uh, engineer and their qualifications are different. That was from the charter review that I said on the charter Thank you. changes form of government. Thank you. There's there's the answer, <laughs> whether it's, you know, that's what the, the group was thinking prior to. I'm okay <laughs> leaving it as is. I hear you, Matt. Okay. But I, I, um, I hear you. Um, we're into Section 504. Yes, uh, Tony. You know, the uh, sheriff gets money from the county, but... What, what's his, how does he fit uh, in it? He's elected. He's an elected. He's elected. elected. Oh, so that's why elected. Thank you. Psst. Oh, good. That was a short answer. Great. Um, in section four, 504. Um, There's a reference. There is a, one also. Yeah. And among the things that the council had asked us to look for, I'm going to read to you um, number 19 on that list. And this has to do with the section, this has to do with the Department of Law. Um, actually, hang on a minute. It's We're not quite there no, yet. No, it's, it's, it's number 18, it's a reorganization, should this be redefined? Right. Um, bear with me. But I was thinking maybe we would get to it when we got to section 507, which was Department of Law. Um, okay. Let's do it the way it was handed to us, which is section, Tony. Uh, C, why is the uh, Department of Law not subject to executive reorganization? When we get to the law department, I've got other questions oh, to raise about We it. all do, I think, probably. I wonder why that, you mean if the exec wanted to move that around a little bit, he can't do it? Um, so let's do this. I don't Just bear with me, everybody. <laughs> I am currently about to read what the county council asked us to look at in section 504 under reorganization. We'll at least just put that on the floor. We'll figure out where it goes. When the in-house department of law, sorry, you ready? When the in-house Department of Law was moved to contractual in 2015, some council members considered this a reorganization. But a reorganization plan legislation was never submitted and approved. The payroll department was moved to the finance department in 2020, and the reorganization plan legislation was not submitted until after the transfer was made. Should this section be redefined with particular consequences and or accountability, should a reorganization plan not be submitted? So as I'm reading this, it seems that the county council believed that <coughs> two things that occurred constituted a reorganization and according to the reorganization, section 504A, that requires that the county executive submit his or her reorganization plan. Wayne? That's correct. 
What's However, correct? This, Sorry, what's this, correct? That that there should have been okay. a plan of reorganization. Thank you. But this gets us back to the same conundrum. Um, that is, uh, what are the consequences? I have a question. Who's that? Blair? Yes. Well, it's, it mentions the word substantial in the section. That could be up to interpretation, I would assume, at some point. Maybe they didn't view those changes as substantial. Show me where you are, Blair. Uh, A, Section 504A. Thank you. In substantial. Event, okay. In the event the county executive mm -hmm. deems substantial reorganization. Okay. Maybe they didn't look at that as substantial. Maybe the yeah, county executive that's didn't that's believe it to be substantial. The correct. county council, at least yeah. some members, believed it that it was substantial. Tony? Well, when, we get, when we get to the Department of Law, that was just done by the executive. No offense, Paul, to you. But I'm, in my mind, when this was adopted, the county attorney was going to be a full-time employee in this building. Yep. Located in this building. So I'm going to hold off, right? I'm going to interrupt you. Get to that part. I think. Correct. To... I'm going to inter Yep. Let's stick. I agree. We're going to have that discussion in a moment. Um, let's get back to the. Does anybody want to do anything with 504 and the reorganization? Blair, I think, has made a pretty interesting observation that it was. The word substantial might be the key word here. Wayne, do you want to offer any insight on this topic? You were the county administrator at the time of these things. Do you want to just walk us through where the executive branch was at that point in time? For I, can, the, I can walk you through where the executive was. That's fine. Absolutely. Uh, the executive felt that he had the authority to make those changes and didn't view it as a reorganization. Uh, I, I frankly don't agree with that. I think when you move a function, a, a, a primary function uh, like payroll from one department to another, I view that as a substantial reorganization. I, I With regard to the Department of Law, you know, when the county executive form of government um, commenced, uh, we did not have an in-house attorney. Say that again. We did not have an in-house attorney. When? When the charter, 2006. when the executive form of government commenced, <clears throat> the law was at Ed Baker's firm. Rick Pollitt submitted a plan of reorganization to bring the attorney in-house. So Bob felt that there was already a precedent that it had been outhouse, <laughs> pardon the pun, <laughs> and that he could revert to an outhouse department of law. Um, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, but what I would say, and we can talk about this a bit later when we get to the department of law, um, the council has its own attorney now. So the whole dynamic has changed. So you have an imbalance where you have a county department of law, 98% of their work is for the executive branch of government. The county council has its own, attor its own attorney, yet you have the county council confirming or having control over who the county attorney is. And to me, there's a real imbalance there. Okay, so agreed. We're going to get to that. Sonia? My question is, so two of the things that I've, I've heard a lot, right? So everybody knows a lot more about the county and the, the background and everything like that. I just like clarity. So two things that we've talked about a lot have been consequences. <clears throat> Correct. And clarity, because it's been kind of nebulous. So when you say deemed subs um, substantial, that is not clear at all. So I, I don't know what to do with that. I'm just saying that does not add any clarity. As a matter of fact, you know, you can interpret it any, any way that you honestly want. Okay. You're, you're correct on those two points that we are seeking. <laughs> um, and the council 
I'll just read again the last question they asked. Should this section be redefined with particular consequences and or accountability should a reorganization plan not be presented? So take out deems substantial. Take out deems substantial. In the event the county executive reorganizes reorganizes within the executive branch. We're getting there. But I think the point, Mike, is how do you define a reorganization? And I think that's the point that was just being made. What is a reorganization? How do you define that? And it's not clear in this charter what reorganization means. How about, I'm, I'm talking off the top of my head, if the county executive deems substantial reorganization to be in the best interest, he, she shall prepare. Re so, what? No. You've got, in other words, the, the substantial is in the eyes of the beholder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've, that's got to go. That's the problem. That's okay. the biggest problem you have. Yes. That has got to come out and be changed, perhaps, to any reorganization is submitted. Any plan of reorganization within the executive branch to be in the best interest of efficient government shall. So Michelle is suggesting that, I'm just talking, I'm just that, and I think it's a nice idea, where it says plan of reorganization, we could say, please help me take notes here, any reorganization, we'll skip the next couple of words, within the executive branch, that is this is where it gets into the best interest of efficient government. So uh, we're on the right path, I think. Any reorganization within the executive branch shall be presented. I, I think you're... I, I can't, I can't, I mean, that could get any reorganization. Any. I change. Okay. So the, we've got 10 people in right, the personnel in the, department correct. and we decide we have, we're going to hire an 11th. Right. Well, is that, that's a great point. Is that, does so, that have to go before the county council? So, that's not a reorganization. Not a reorganization. so when we, that's not hold a on, hold on. Well, <laughs> I see Sharon's hand first. As an example of, of this reorganization, when HR was created, and because it used to be done by administrative people up here. When HR was created as a department, as a separate department, the people that went there were doing payroll. Finance department used to do payroll. To make it more efficient, they moved all of that that had to do with the employee to one position. So they reorganized HR in order to accommodate that. So the budget that was that went with those people also left that department. The, so question, the impact of the budget makes it substantial depending on who's moved that transfers with the person with the person. So when that happened it went before the council for approval, I'm assuming? It happened before this. The Fair. Got it. Thank that you. Show. Got it. Okay. So that's why it's Got it. there. So, Mike, yep. in, in, in trying to define reorganization, um, in my mind, reorganization would mean the transfer of responsibilities from one department to another, the addition of new responsibilities to a department, or the elimination of responsibilities from a department. I think it gets, I'm trying to get clear on what do we mean by reorganization. And also the funding that would follow, yes. the funding that would flow in or out, or out of the department. Um, as well as well, any. So, uh, Wayne, what was that again? Yeah, was, your three were tra transfer of responsibilities, additional responsibilities, or? Elimination of responsibilities. Elimination of responsibilities, and then Michelle is adding funding. Uh, the funding. That would result in changes in funding by any of them. Would the creation or dissolution of any any departments also fall under this? I would certainly, again, that's where elimination. elimination. Okay, okay. So 
Wayne, if I think I'm hearing you correctly, bear with me, everybody. This is the fun part. If we defined what reorganization was, then, then this language in A might be able to stand as is. Julie? Is there an org chart? I can't find, I've been looking online trying to find an actual org chart that isn't just for planning and zoning. I haven't been able to find it. If we found that, we could find the executive level and then we could determine two things. One, where the departments are, and two, which organization, which level of organization. Usually there's about five levels and usually there's a top level that would indicate does any what the charter would be involved? Is there an org chart for Wicomico County Executive? I think he, yes. 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 Could it be produced? Yes. I'll try to find it for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so where do we think we are? Are we at attempting to define what we think is a reorganization and on the table right now? might be defined as a transfer of responsibilities, adding responsibilities, or deleting responsibilities, any of which or all of which may end up with funding implications, would define a reorganization. And if we wanted to go down that road, should we add that as the new A? And then we drop A to B, B to C, et cetera, et cetera. Yes? Mm -hmm. Does anybody want? Mike, Michelle, you yes. You have to get you somewhere in here you'll need to keep the executive reorganization plan shall be submitted to the council. And mm -hmm. we really want to go 60 days? That's the other question. Um, is 60 days too long or too short? Where is your brain? Too long? I think it's too long. If you're going to do all of this and have a plan to do it, I really think you should be able to get it to those guys within 30 days so they have time. Because if you're talking 60 days to get it there, probably another 30 or 60 for them to respond. So to play that out, if the county executive, and this is a county council meeting, came and he or she would be sitting right here at the table, and they would propose reorganizing the Department of Finance, just making, you would expect the county executive, who obviously at this point has already given it a lot of thought, because he or she is now in front of the council, that that plan should be submitted to the council within 30 days instead of within 60. I don't find it unreasonable. Yeah, I, looking at the group, I, I, I don't disagree. So, so what are so are you are you proposing that are, are we what, are we going to take this and send basically after the word substantial, maybe in, in parentheses or what? Take substantial out. Well. Oh, take it out. Oh, I was going to say substantial and then define, define, you know, define it. No, yeah, what if we did that? If we, in the event the county executive deems substantial reorganization within the executive branch, um, he shall prepare a reorganization plan. Then we define substantial. Right. Substantial would, incl substantial would include transfer of responsibilities, transfer additional responsibilities. Sonia, I think I see your hand in the air. Okay, so um, when Julie asked for the org char chart and it had different levels, what I was my what was being implied to me was we're taking out a substantial and we're un trying to understand level. So if it's level three, I'm again making it up. Level three, we are definitive because substantial is there's it's not definitive. We're de you're defining um, reorganization. That makes that makes sense, um, but. That just makes sense anyway, so you don't get to the personnel level and you start getting into the weeds and, and everything like that. Um, and so does defining the levels and not saying substantial, because that still leaves it up to interpretation. That's a good point. Okay, how about if you made it executive deems reorganization necessary? Um, yeah. Which would include transferring a responsibility, adding responsibilities, eliminating responsibilities, and I guess Changing. moving a funding up might, because that, that could be a few hundred dollars and it's not worth going through the, jump through the hoops for that, but unless you, go ahead. Sharon. 
Um, at the bottom, it says on D, as used in this article, reorganization mm -hmm. shall include, and then it has a resolution. Oh. Is it possible we could pull that resolution to see if it brings any clarity? Laura? What's in yes. the charter? D. So can I ask a question, Laura? Thank you, Sharon. Great idea. When we see these bold at the bottom of D, as Sharon just referenced, added 8 to 2016 by resolution number one, why isn't that in here? Uh, I mean, Where is it? That, that's that's the, the resolution that approved the language. Yeah, the, the language that's in here was put in by that resolution. Right, so, so why do we... There so was a change in 2016 from prior language to... So this is the new this language. Is the new language, language. Okay. And when so added, I might add... All right. You have that resolution in your packets. I'll ask a different question. Why is it necessary to have that bold point added? Why do, why do we do... Why is that in there? I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm. The publisher does it, I guess, it's a document. just for reference. Yeah, I think. So if, yeah. so if we make any, to your point, Sharon, it's not the original charter, I might say. So any change that we may recommend that the county council may send along to the voters and the voters may vote up, would all of them that say added? Yes. Yes. I see. Thank you. Okay, I'm learning here, okay. Um, Maybe we just need to skip from A to D because, no, I'm ser no, seriously, go back, look at D and mm -hmm. see if that takes care of our concern. Right. Does it? It may take care of, I'm looking at it for the definition. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Oh, who, Sonia? I heard you. I I'm like, sorry, D, I was just letting D you go. D might take care of, I think it takes care of, especially D2. Um, you can look at that. It takes care of what we were talking about for the definition of it, of reorganization, and that's what it says here. Um, as used in this article, reorganization shall include. Still have a problem with substantial. It's not clear. That does it, That's interpretation. Let's try to go. Because we defined it here. I'm hearing some conversation over here. That's you. Anybody got a thought? I was just saying it seems as though, yes, that it is defined in D uh, what the reorganization is, and if substantial was removed, it might make it more clear. And we so it also, yeah. please, please Catherine, me. it's almost like D needs to be A. a. Yeah, I think that too. Rather than an afterthought, it should begin. Because what is we, we, not, we wouldn't have them that last so conversation. Last yeah, time. correct. Even. <laughs> The conversation we've had, if we just kept going down to D, just to flip it and make that one A. Um, uh, go ahead, Wayne, Paul. Paul, <laughs> if, if we are simply rearranging paragraphs, just right. does, that, does that have to go on a ballot? I think it would because it would? yeah, you're move you're creating a new format for the charter. Okay, it's just it's it's um, it's going to be confusing. I can see pe I can see me going into a voting booth and going, I'm about to vote to move letter D a. to letter A, A to B. Now that's the right thing to do. Whoever made that suggestion, Catherine, I think that was you. But if we have eight, Whoa. <laughs> to present, this would not. <laughs> so. Let's back up. Can, can we go back up and, and um, take out the word substantial and then a after reorganization put refer to uh, 504D or something like that? Well, I'm going to go back to what the county council was asking of us. <clears throat> if there were apparently the county executive deemed, apparently the county executive did not follow what the charter says in 504 two times according to the county council in 2015 and in 2020. And the county council was saying, <laughs> are there any particular consequences and or accountability if this is not followed? And yet again, here we come back to the accountability. Because to me, now that we've just had 15 minutes of conversation, 
it's spelled out right here. And the county council is saying to us, I'm not saying they're right, by the way, I'm just simply saying for the sake of this discussion, county council is saying, hey, this wasn't followed, what can we do? What can we do about it to help make sure that this doesn't happen again? <laughs> Which, to Sonia's point, gets back to where we are. It's about clarity, and it's about some sort of punitive act. That's not your words, but that's sort of where you are. What, what did you say? Accountability. Accountability. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so here we are. Well, Phil? On, yes, sir. On the list of things that we review at the end. Yes, we can talk about this whole section 407, 8, 9, et cetera, removal of the county executive for, for reason, and after we go through all this other stuff. And then maybe we add for reason could be a violation of the charter? Well, any, any violation of the charter, yeah. And that's certainly up for discussion, and, and the wording oh, would be I, I, difficult, but but not impossible, so, rather than try to no, right. add, add every, yeah. every time the county executive is supposed to do something, try to add punitive measures if he right. doesn't. Uh, in each of these sections, doesn't make sense to me. Right, and then we just go back, if I'm following what you're saying, we go back to whatever that section is for, for uh, and we add two words, for reason, and... So following that, we're getting a little off topic here. Who would, who would then remove the county executive if we went down that road for a reason? And it was deemed that the county executive, whomever he or she is. There's, I'm remembering what yep. I'm not looking at. No, understood. There's a whole uh, scenario where of A, B, C. You're yeah. accused of not following the or doing whatever. So same thing that if you're accused of a, of a felony yep. or whatever. So again, under this, a little bit softer, Not this is not a felony, this is a charter violation. Who literally would then remove the county executive? That's for discussion when we get to that point. I'm not, I don't think we can wordsmith it Understood. at this point, but it, right. it can be. Uh, Mr. Wilbur. What are you? What, yeah, you're listening to this, um, and Phil, I love that idea. By the way, um, we're just talking out loud here. Again, back to the accountability. Right, this is a consistent theme here, and it's something that I think everybody on this charter review committee agrees is one of the things that we want to try and resolve. But we keep coming back to this, you know, pretty serious. If, again, going back to what was asked of us tonight, reorganization, if it was shown that the county executive reorganized two different departments and did not submit a reorganization plan, according to Phil, again, just having discussion here, which we'll discuss later, that would be for reason that we could, that the county executive could be removed from office. How enforceable might that be yeah, that, in some court of law or some body if the county council raised this or if the citizenry raised this? I think that this committee's already had some discussion along, and where it bogs down yeah. is who, if there is perceived, say, by the council that there is this uh, violation of the charter, then you get into degree. Is it a small violation? Is it a major sure. violation? Then who makes the decision about removal? Is that going to be some third-party group that makes that decision? Or a special election or? Under Section 408, the if... If the supermajority of the council votes to remove the executive, then he can appeal it to the to the circuit court, and then then the court it would decide. Well, wait a minute, your definition of substantial is I agree with it, says the judge, or I don't agree with it. But that would 
it would, it, that would be the process. And the hope would be, of course, never to get to that. Uh, hope, right. Of course. <laughs> right. For the sake of this county. I that, um, yeah, that could go on for a, a while. long time. Yeah. Long. Sure. That's right. Uh, the acrimony. Would be, be irreparable. Uh, well, for a long time. <laughs> you, mean, you mean worse than we've had? Yeah, good yeah. point. Acrimony? Good point. <laughs> no. Oh, come on. <laughs> Julie, I see your hand up. Thank you, Paul. I see you. Go ahead. Yes. My, it's my understanding that the counties are granted <clears throat> their ability to rule by the state. So under Maryland Code uh, Division Three, which is Counties Title Ten Express Powers Act, Subtitle Two, Express Powers of Charter Counties, uh, 10-202 Local Laws, that we a county may enact local laws and repeal or amend any local law. This is, there's a, this is, it's just one page. Yep. And then it says enforcement of ordinances, resolutions, bylaws, and regulations. A county may provide for the enforcement of an ordinance, a resolution, a bylaw, or a regulation adopted under this title. One, by fines not exceeding $1,000 or by criminal fines and penalties not exceeding $1,000 and imprisonment not to exceed six months. Uh, that's written in the state, I mean, why? I mean, why are we? I feel like we are um, spinning our wheels trying to find apt punishment for um, well, a, a, a breach of. Would you read the four things that you said they were? Resolution. What did you read? By uh, enforcement of ordinances, resolutions, bylaws, and regulations. So. This would fall under regulate. The charter would fall under regulation, right? In this, or not, or not, Paul? <laughs> see, because I don't well, see a charter well, violation among the four things that you just mentioned. Well, any changes will be by a charter resolution, Plus, yeah. which is resolution under state law. Mm -hmm. It's the use of that word under state law. That's different than a resolution of the county council to so, do a certain act. Okay. So, Julie, if I'm hearing you correctly, <laughs> you think we're beating a dead horse on the accountability side because there's already accountability. So, if that's the case, as these accountability issues have been... <laughs> As Phil just properly pointed out, can't get much worse than things have been. Why wasn't that step ever taken? I might ask. Can you read those one more time? I'm sorry. No, good. No, Laura, absolutely. And for, um, it's enforcement of ordinances, resolutions, bylaws, and regulations. A county may provide for the enforcement of an ordinance, a resolution, a bylaw, or a regulation adopted under this title title of express powers of charter counties and then it's it, i give you this it gives you the two thousand dollars and then six months in prison yeah we can get a copy of that sure yeah wayne but the enforcement ultimately lands you in court well and that's probably why we've been walking this high wire act because nobody wanted to take anybody to court and i think that's the case when i say the high wire act the sonya so we're talking about the account. Is that to have to do with the section, the stuff that we're just talking about? No, we've sidebarred a minute. Okay. <laughs> All right. So back to the section. Um, I definitely agree with, I'm not going to make a motion on this because I know we had the discussion, but at least moving A or what you um, mentioned in terms of referencing that it's defined, like D defines reorganization. It does. I am beating a dead horse. Substantial needs to come out. I make a motion to take substantial out of section 504A, line two, that first word and on line two. Um, it could be replaced with something, but that is so nebulous. I'll second it. That's a motion and a second. So we would be simply removing the word substantial from plan A, I mean, from um, 504A. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? OK, 
Okay, let's take a vote. All those in favor of removing the word substantial, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes. Um, great discussion. Thank you. With that discussion, we've been here for an hour. It's time to stand up and stretch our legs for five minutes. We will take a five-minute break. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for these good discussions. Um, thank you, Julie, for this. We now have a copy. Um, and Phil and Julie, I'm going to workshop challenge you two to look into section 407 for reason um, and maybe the two of you can start looking into that so that when we come back to that sure thank you very much um, okay we are I think we're finished with section 504 okay 505 which is the Department of Finance I had a note under B. Yes, sir, Tony. I apologize. Uh, and in A, where it says his, we ought to change it to there. We're going to, we've already made, yep. You've done that. Yep, we're doing with throughout. That will be changed. Yes, sir. And can we keep going? In the, uh, in B, it says um, powers and duties formally vested or imposed upon the county treasurer. Then somebody's going, somebody's going to say, what did the county treasurer do? So whether that can just come out or oh. we need to rework that. That's exactly where I was going. Right. Um, no, 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 thank you. Um, we don't have a county treasurer anymore. Um, we have a, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody who knows better than me, we don't have a county treasurer, correct? We only did when we, before we went to home rule. We had a county treasurer. Okay. Every county in Maryland. Right. Okay. okay. Under home rule, then you have a director of finance. So. It's in transitional language. A change from treasurer to finance is in the back in transitional language. So can we just, if we, we don't need to do anything? All right. Recovered. Tony, you cool? Okay. Uh, go ahead. Br bring it forth. No, I, I think that ought to come out, frankly where it says duties formally vested or imposed upon the county treasurer. If we don't have, if a lot of people younger than we are will say, well, what did the county treasurer do? Am I missing something? I, I, I think it's, to me, when I read it, I thought. And maybe to Sharon and Phil, <laughs> I'm acknowledging that we used to have a county treasurer, and this is establishing simply the transitional language. All of the transitional language. What 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 page are you on when you say in the back? Sorry. All the way in the twelve o twelve o two C fifty three. Twelve o two C fifty three. Is this going to really rise to the uh, eight or ten or six or what well, we're going to feel comfortable right. submitting to the council? But, uh, it's all so. So it says in 1202, the office of county treasurer shall stand abolished. So I'm with you, Tony. I'm learning on as we go right now. I had also circled that, but I had not. Hello. No worries. I tell everybody we said hello. <laughs> That's fine. Um, That's fine. But since it, it's referencing that, I think we're cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, Anything else in 505 for anyone? Looking around the room, turning to Phil. Okay. I was just thinking. You were just thinking you wish you were sitting no in his chair. On anything, okay. but the last county treasurer was Tom Parker, Henry Parker's brother. B brother. Was the last county, right. county treasurer. So, so that that's goes, historical knowledge, which has no use in this. No, of course it is. <laughs> it's, it's truly for those of you who may not know the name Henry Parker, who had the pleasure of knowing him and the importance yeah. of his family. That's a great reference. Thank you, Phil. He's a, he's a dear man. Sonia? So why does that, it's a transitional language, but why does it still need to be in there? Well, that's sort of what Tony and I were, are asking. That's, but but what Matt is suggesting is that at the end of the day, 
when we have to put recommendations to the county council who then has to make recommendations to the voter uh, is this one that that is worth but didn't we say that we were going to put down everything that we were talking about and we did we were determine it yes so that's not it so if we if we're talking about doing it i i don't understand why it needs to well, be in there um and or it's a question i mean i don't think that no, we want to so it. i'll go back to my standard line does somebody want to make a motion and to your point, Sonia, yes, every single thing that we pass, we will come back and revisit. So if somebody wants to make a motion about the language of the county treasurer, now would be the time to do it. And we'll see where that motion goes. Okay, because it's just a motion that will be in the records more so than we're not trying to say that this is going to be one of the eight items. Well, if we're going to act on it, if you want to make a motion about the language, if somebody wants to make the motion on the language, we can go ahead and put it on the table. I, I just have a general question. Certainly. I ask, isn't this more just clerical? Because it's already in the transitional provision that it should just be wiped out as a clerical, like we have all the he's in there that need to be they's. Ah. I mean, isn't that... Paul Wilbur, would this be a clerical or would this be a change that... Thank you, Catherine. No, it's all... I think you should knock it out. You know, we're we're way past the uh, day. You know, the transitional stage. So remove it. Yeah. So um, the question is, yeah. do the voters need to approve that? That's the question yeah. to you, no. Paul. Yes. Well, I think it is. It's a change in the language of the charter, and I think it it should go. I mean, the the practical problem of how much does the council want to send to the voters? That's that's just a, sort of a logistical, practical of problem. Of course. But that's Mike, down the road. Wayne, I think. Viewed, viewed differently, um, I believe that the transitional language uh, preserves the history of the migration of this charter and this government. And I would uh, argue that it should remain in place. Okay, thank you. I think I saw a hand, Sharon first, then Sonia coming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> right, right, right. Sonia? But doesn't that preserving the history in that transitional section, like we're not talking about taking, um, getting rid of the transitional section, but in the working document for the charter, do we need to have more words or less words? I, is, is, how, how is that relevant here? As long as it's, um, that the history is preserved in the transitional section. This is a nice philosophical argument, discussion. <laughs> and again, if somebody wants Tony. Somebody reading that, and I'm going to get off of it, but somebody reading that doesn't know that you have to go to the back and look it up. I didn't. So I read it and I thought, why is that there? That's what I did. And if, if we're going to keep the historical part, then it ought to say reference something and you can go back there and look at it. Now mm -hmm. I know. But to Sonia's point, part, you know, getting a little clarity and or shortening the language were appropriate. Um, we're certainly not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, mm -hmm. but I will absolutely <coughs> entertain a motion because it seems to me this is an interesting topic. If somebody wants to make a motion, now would be the time to do it. Okay. We're going to move on. Um, we're down through Section 505, looking around the room, turning the page. Yes, who, um, Laura, you may. Um, so in 505A, the very last sentence says, Director of Finance shall be appointed and removed in the salary fixed in accordance with Section 502B of this article. I think there was some confusion as to um, just referencing 502B for the appointment of that position, um, but not, but not um, referencing Section 315 and 413 that pertain to the appointments of the department. And quite clearly the salary is not affixed in section 502b is it 
No. Okay. So you have a really valid point, Laura. I think she's. Um, are Laura? Are you suggesting, for our consideration, the removal of the last sentence in A? If that clarifies it, yes. I'm so pointing it out because yep. that was a problem. In the past. Uh, absolutely. Um, I would agree. Why is that in there? Because we've already gone over appointed and removed in a different section. And it's quite evident that the salary of the director of finance, formerly known as the county treasurer, <laughs> is not found anywhere in um, 502B. It's fixed in accordance with 502B. Yeah. In accordance with 502B. Right. And, it's the All right. and then 502B says State. shall be fixed by the county executive subject to the budget. Right. So that's the procedure, not the number. Right. right. Thank you, Paul. Um, so, Laura, your thing is really with the first part. Shall be appointed and removed. Yes. What's the, in a sense, what are we saying that for here now? Um, what, what's so director of the finance department who was not submitted to the council for confirmation and the reason for that was because the finance director fell under section 505 and so those other provisions did not apply to this individual. Whoa, so you're saying that you think we need to pay a little bit more attention to 505 department of finance. So for the group, recent history and among the challenges that have faced our county government in recent history revolved around the appointment of the de <laughs> director of finance. So this is, um, so we need a little clarity here because this was. I think it just adds confusion. Right. So the county executive used section 505 to run around my words the other section of the charter yes. i see but so if i think i'm so where is where what section are the appointments can anybody go backward for me and with me where is this? okay so if we bear with us, everyone, I know this is complicated. So, 315, which we made a correction to earlier tonight, deals with the appointments of department heads and directors. Directors. Now, move forward to where we are in section 505. Why is it repeated here? that the director of finance shall be appointed and removed when it's already in section 315. As well as 413. As well as 413. Mm -hmm. So when the county previous county executive retained the director of finance against the wishes of the county council because they thought this was a violation, the county executive used section 505A as justification on why it overrode the other two or caused confusion. And I'm not here to ask you to be the charter expert, Laura, but none of the other sections and back to where we were earlier, this isn't in any other county department, rec and parks, public works, law, so why is it here? Okay. So um, I'd like to fix this. I don't have the fix, but again, anybody paying any attention to Wicomico County government in the last five years, this might be exhibit A in the most challenging things that the county council wanted, they were stuck on. I don't know. So what can we do to fix and correct this? Laura, I think you're saying, we've got the charter saying two different things here. Okay, so we gotta, let's fix this. 
um, um, we could, I might recommend, because I do want to fix this, elimination of the last sentence in paragraph A. I agree. Would somebody like to make a motion and then we can have some discussion? I so move. Who's, thank you, Phil. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Wayne. I want everybody to kind of, I, I, I know, how do I put this? I follow this stuff a little more than the average bear, so I might have been just talking stuff that people didn't follow. So I want to make sure now that we have a motion on the floor in a second why we're doing this. Everybody sort of clear on why we're doing this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sonia? So with the sections that were just, that Laura and everybody just mentioned, so it was 315, 413, and then there's 502B. Yes. 502A. A, A, 505A. 505A. Yep. They keep referencing 502B. I, so... And this might not be fair, and this might be saying, it's saying you need to workshop it or it's whatever. All good. No. What is the difference between those? I keep seeing department heads and provisions and appointments in each of those sections. Um, and so I'm trying to, I need to, I like one source of the truth personally. So I just want to try and understand what the differences are. Um, I don't know if somebody has it off the top of their head, and I'm going to look into it myself, but that's. When I'm looking at them really, really quickly right now, I don't see that. And there, there has to be a reason why they're in here. So, um, so, so it was 315, 413. To me, the ones that, I want, that I'm going to look at are 315, 413, 502B, and 505A. I'm going to take a stab at answering the part of that that I think I can answer. That doesn't mean I'm right, but I'm going to take a stab at it. In Section 300, that deals with the county council's role okay. in the appointment process. Mm -hmm. Going into the Section 400, that's the county executive's role. Okay, that's so he starts the action in 400, and 300 is the county a summary of the county council's mm -hmm. role. So I can answer that, I think. Does that help no, your brain? Section. Yes. Nope. Mm -hmm. Now, as to the five, 502B, I got to go back and look at that. Um, I think that's under, right, if we're taking this literally. General That provisions. deals with the, the, or, the administrative organization of the county government. And that lays out, right, Department of Law and all of that. And 502B... Again, shall be appointed by the county executive. So this is spelling out what the departments and administrative functions of the county government are. And 502B simply establishes that the county executive is the one who appoints those departments that are below. Okay. So there's a reason for each one of those sections? As, right. At okay. least as, again, this is just me, you and me walking down this path. Mm -hmm. Now, 505A is the last sentence, which I can't remember if we have a motion. We do. We're on the floor. We have a motion mm -hmm. and a second. Thank you. That last sentence, Sonia, um, was used to circumvent... My word, the two articles that we just talked about, the section in 300 and the section in 400, the county executive used as his reasoning to appoint this finance director without getting the approval of the county council, rightly or wrongly, he used 505A as his defense, and Wayne is nodding. It, it, please, um, please. It's unnecessary language, in mm -hmm. my opinion, and it, it, it creates unnecessary ambiguity. It's very clear that every department head uh, must be confirmed by the county 
council and this I think dilutes that and confuses that um, and and that's the reason I think it should be stricken thank you Wayne Catherine um, should we also be looking at section 506 uh, for a direct Department of Public Works if we're going to wipe out the, the one sentence or mm -hmm. if it's proposed for the director of finance we should also look at for director of public works yes yes you want to take both of them at the same time or let's let's do this we have a motion on the floor we're discussing 505 a and then when we get to 506 in a moment we'll we'll entertain that motion how about that okay is there any more discussion on the motion to remove the last sentence in section 505 a seeing none we'll call for the vote all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed that's unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Laura, very much for helping us with that. Mr. Holloway, I appreciate your poker face back there. Thank you very much. Um, yes, sir. Um, <laughs> this is this is uh, challenging stuff. We're all using our big brains here, so thank you, everyone. Anything else in 505? I'm going to turn to 506. Um, at the very least, yes, sir, Tony. Uh, the engineer ought to be licensed in the state of Maryland. I'm sorry, I did not hear that. Yeah, could you repeat? about their qualifications. It says uh, engineering degree from a college or university having an accredited engineering curriculum of four years and should be licensed in the state of Maryland. Tony, that's covered in the code. Why not say it here too? I can't answer that, but it's it's a requirement in the code. I, mean, I think, well, okay, if it's in the code, fine, but I, they definitely ought to be licensed in Maryland. And I think if what I'm hearing Wayne say, if Susan Smith applies to be the director of public works before being hired, um, it would be flagged that these requirements and being licensed in the state of Maryland. Yeah, you have to be a professional engineer licensed. In and if Susan Smith does not have that license in Maryland, she would not apply. get the job. Yeah. So you cool with that, Tony? That's fine. All right. Um, Catherine, if you wanted to make that motion that we just did in 505, I'll like certainly to, entertain that. I'd like to make a motion for Section 506 under Department of Public Works. Under a, under a, thank you, yep. To remove the, the last sentence, the Director of Public Works shall be appointed, removed, and their salary fixed in accordance with Section 502 of this charter and have that sh just strike it. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Who was that, Sonia? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there discussion? Okay, all those in favor of removing uh, the last sentence in 506A, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, everyone. At the very least, we're showing a little consistency here as a group. Um, thank you. Um, going through, again, we're at, um, we're okay with 506. Um, 507. Wow. It's 5.30. Um, <laughs> you mean 6.30? 6.30. Sorry. This is, th I use every ounce of my brain on this first hour and a half. I apologize. It's 6.30. Um, I'm just going to talk to the group here for a second. I'm just talking out loud. My gut tells me that we have a lot of discussion on Section 507. <laughs> um, one of the things I had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Wilbur um, earlier today and what I was going to ask Paul to do tonight, and I think this is a good start for 507, is I asked Paul to kind of, I think Wayne alluded to it a, a, a moment ago, but I, I kind of wanted Paul to talk kind of at the macro level on what the job, or again, we're not getting into how it's paid or whether it's, who said outhouse earlier tonight, whether it's in-house or outhouse, Wayne. <laughs> All I'm asking Paul to do right now is just to stay macro with me, and Paul is going to review 
um, kind of what it is that the county attorney, the one appointed by the county executive, who is the uh, attorney of record representing Wicomico County. Paul, would you be willing um, to kind of go down that road with us a little bit? I think that would be very helpful. Well, I think that uh, B, section B, under 507 Functions. is, uh, you know, that's the the function list for the county attorney. We we can all see it, and those uh, functions are um, for the county executive and for the county council, as are set out in that um, section. Uh, so the county attorney is performing legal work for both sides of the county government. Um, the the way that works out in practice, I would say that most of the work of the county attorney is with the departments. That's where the the constant need for legal services, I would say at least 70% or probably greater is coming from your departments. Uh, then you're dealing directly with the executive and you're dealing directly with the council probably more with the executive because the administrative side has the departments in it and you're so you're interacting with the executive um, maybe 20 percent of the time with the council maybe 10 percent of the time uh, but mostly you're interacting below the level of the council or the executive as far as performing legal work in terms of what your t your time is being spent on. So does that help? Any questions? Yeah, fire away. Any thoughts or questions at all? Um, Paul, I'm going to ask one, which is gets me a little confused now that we also have a council attorney. So, and I have heard, I, again, I watch some council meetings now and again, and so I'm sure everybody in here has done. On occasion, and I'm not saying frequently, but on occasion, if a question is asked um, that requires a, an opinion, a legal opinion, um, I've seen on occasion where the county attorney offers interpretation A for the question at hand, and the county council attorney might offer interpretation B for the question at hand. So as someone watching at home sometimes, that gets pretty confusing, right? Um, here we are, what opinion is the opinion that, if you will, carries the day or carries the, the rule of law with it if this had to be adjudicated? Could you answer that for us to the best of your ability without Try, uh, we're not getting into. I can answer for it. Yeah, Mr. Holland, hold on. They disagree, but they also agree. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I'm not. That, no, exactly. Absolutely. And, yeah, well, what I would say, sort of in line with what Joe's saying, <clears throat> is uh, sure, when you have two attorneys, sure. they're, they're not <laughs> going to be in line with each other sure. on every single legal right. issue that they're asked to opine on. Uh, Frequently, they can be in line, but there certainly will be times where they just say, look at the same situation and interpret it and analyze it differently. That's, that's uh, what lawyers do. We just had a Supreme Court decision, I believe, today that was, what, uh, seven to two. Of course. So, yeah. So, where my, and I acknowledge that most of the time the opinions are the same, but when they do differ, and if the opinions differ, and this again gets adjudicated, who is the attorney of record when and if this were to be adjudicated, but, if council attorney said X and county attorney said Y? Well, uh, oh, let me say one thing. Mm -hmm. the, if the county is going to court, the county attorney is going to be representing the county. Okay. The very specific question that you're asking is if the council attorney and the county attorney disagree, what can happen? I suppose you could have that go to court. That, that would be, a, I think, an unusual circumstance. Certainly it can happen. 
And what are judges for? You know, they're to they'd have to to uh, hear the facts yep. and yep. analyze the law and make their decision, Weigh in. their analysis. Okay, that's the way that would be resolved. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir, Phil. The county attorney advises <coughs> the county executive and advises planning and zoning and the other departments. Is that right? That's correct. So the final decision maker or the seven elected people or the one elected people who either takes your advice or doesn't take your advice. Isn't yes. that correct? That's true, too. So it's it's not a legal opinion that's, wow, this is this is the Supreme right. Court just said, right, right. Paul Wilbur just said so. <laughs> sure. It means it's true. <laughs> no. You know, you advise the people and they can... They could decide five or five sure. to two, for instance. To take his take advice. Take the advice. Right. And, yep. you Thank know, you, Phil. A lawyers advise clients, yep. but rather the clients accept the advice. Yep. Is All the time. I think the smart ones the usually take the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Great point. <laughs> Questions for Paul in this macro level? Um, okay, so what I think the group should do, because I, I just... I'm a little leery of going into Section 507 at 20 minutes of six so because, gosh, I'm, I'm, you're trying to give us another. I can't hour. read a clock anymore. Apparently, now if everybody <laughs> looks at the second hand. It yeah. does. It come on now, help me out. It does. No, it, it, it looks should like be it's a little bit. All right, it's all me. I'll take it. It's all me. Um, is the group okay? With beginning, um, we'll cut our work off right now and begin our next meeting at at Department of Law. Yes. Who said yes? Who said yes? <laughs> Phil? Oh. Thank you. I see hands over here. Well, to just to one question, Michelle. I agree fully with cutting this off because yep. this is going to be lengthy, and there are resolutions in here that we should be looking at. Yes. I have a question before we go to the public, though. Certainly. I don't know how many people in here have vacations planned in the next two months. I don't. We're on a farm. We just have grass and chickens. But for, for families and the fact that it's opening up out here, is it a thought that we take a break, maybe do the first meeting in July, and then come back together after Labor Day? Um, that's, that's well, I, I mean, I heard someone before say they had two vacations so, planned. And so let, let's, yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, to the group, I applaud everybody. Our attendance um, has been spectacular. Our commitment, I applaud everyone. Um, recall that um, one of the reasons we have an alternate, we had, I think, seven or eight alternates. Um, Mr. Holloway actually was uh, very pointed in remembering that uh, 10 years ago, they had people not showing up. And so that's why they added some alternates. We've done a really good job uh, tonight. Uh, Dallas is not here. He let us know that at the last meeting. And Bob Benson had a court appearance, and he let us know that. Uh, Tony had some dental work done last time. Sharon, obviously, you had to miss the last one. And But overall, we're doing a really good job, and we haven't had to go into that, well, you're missing too many meetings. So, Michelle, I hear you. Um, I'll look to the group. Our next scheduled meeting is July the 1st. Um, as long as everybody, and, and Matt, to your point, Michelle had mentioned he's got a few family vacations, but as long as everybody can kind of let me or Laura know, I think we've gone, done a really good job of having a minimum of 13 people here, and we haven't had anybody miss you know, multiple meetings where we've got to have a conversation with them. So I hear you, um, but if the group's okay, we'll just continue. I'm a little worried about taking the whole summer off, only because, wow, we've been at this for, I don't know, two or three months now, and we still have a long way to go. So I hear you. Um, but if up. I'm not no, absolutely. No, nope, I appreciate it. No, I, I very much appreciate it. So just we'll keep going down the road that we are. Just let us know in advance. Tony, I saw your hand up prior to Michelle. So please. Oh, um, it, um, well, it pertains to the thing on law. Wayne and I have a dis disagreement, uh, over something. I was on the council when this charter came up. I made the I didn't. The council need to review the entire charter before it went before it went on the ballot. And the Department of Law, no offense to Paul, was an in-house department. Period. And, and when that passed, Ed Baker 
moved into this building. Now, somewhere in the shuffle, that got changed. So here's what we're going to do. You need to look at that. And that's why we're not going to talk about that no, tonight. No, it gets very long-winded. <coughs> no, no, no. The, I, I, I think we could spend potentially <laughs> the entire next meeting on 507. Mm -hmm. So I'm hesitant to get started on it tonight. Tony? One, one last thing, if I can say. You better not mention the law Paul's, department. No, it's, this is short. <laughs> okay. Greeks are short Kidding. talkers. Uh, <laughs> one thing that I, I remember <laughs> saying <laughs> to you. Well, Watch said, yourself, Phil. Phil. <laughs> one thing I remember saying to the county council then, yes. you know, it's, there's one attorney, that's fine as long as the exec and the council gets along. The minute they don't, all hell's going to break loose, well, and it did. So we will attempt to address 507 next time. <laughs> um, yeah, Sonia, you may. Um, this is, it's in this section, and it might be somewhere else. It's just a question I have. When you look at B, and again, not the content of it, it's really just semantics. Why, um, is there a reason why things are listed all in paragraph and it's not bulleted like other numbers? Because it's very, it's challenging to read. You know, like you have one, two, three, and I didn't know if there was a reason why, because there, there might be another section like that. And you don't have to answer it now, but it's, it's been something that I wanted to ask. Well, we will certainly bring that up at the next meeting. Okay, sounds great. We will now, thank you everybody, great meeting, we're not done yet, public comments. If anybody has any public comments, now would be the time. Laura, thanks for setting up the microphone. Hello, Mr. Tim. Uh, good evening. Sorry for being a bit late tonight. Uh, I want to kind of work backwards um, and just start on kind of a personal note. I was the council's attorney for about three years and eight months, I believe, until um, March of this year. Um, and I think there really wasn't a lot of head-clashing dispute between me and Mr. Wilbur, uh, particularly on big legal issues. I think the, the only thing I can remember where we really were totally different was on a uh, Public Information Act request. Uh, and I won't go into the details. Please not, exa don't. <laughs> not exactly a huge matter. Yes. Yep. Um, and it was resolved out of court because the person who provided the, the material that somebody wanted gave it to the person who wanted it. They didn't have to get it from the county. So uh, nothing happened there. Um, I don't think all hell broke loose. I really wouldn't put it that way. Uh, I think the reference is probably to Mr. Culver's conduct. Uh, and I would say this, that his big argument about why he didn't have to get council approval for the finance director had to do with a charter amendment that had been made uh, in 2018. Um, I won't get into the weeds on that, but the argument that was based on the charter language that you've been discussing, it came up to... But frankly, nobody, and I don't think that would include Mr. Wilbur <laughs> as part of the, he's not the nobody, uh, would, would read that as supporting Culver's argument. I mean, he was throwing everything out uh, that you could imagine, uh, and that was part of it. Um, working, still working backwards, you're now in the part of the charter that is no longer just the general structure of the county government. It's more in terms of operational aspects of the county government, administrative and others. And this really needs a lot of research and review. And by that I mean going and looking at other charters, because we've got actually, what, 11 other charter counties, uh, only uh, nine with county execs, but there are a total of 11 other. Uh, I wouldn't get into Baltimore County, uh, Baltimore City, rather, it's charter 600 pages, forget it. Um, but the others are, are not nearly that long, um, and they're worth reading, particularly, for example, on something like reorganization. Take a look at what they say, because I, th I think you'll find that they're s simpler than ours. Uh, they're structured differently. Uh, for example, I think that, in my opinion, the major departments should be defined in the charter, just like public works is, law, and uh, finance. And any, any reorganization of, of what I'm going to call the big departments should be done by charter amendment. I mean, it would be ridiculous for the duties of the public works director to be assigned 
to human resources. I mean, think about it. You know, the, the change that uh, has, I think, triggered the discussion was the movement of payroll from finance to human resources. N n not a huge thing, but, ne but nevertheless, it should be the way it's structured in the charter, and if it's going to be changed, it should be done by a charter amendment, not some kind of an, a less formal reorganization process. It char the charter can be amended every two years. We have an election where you can have a referendum every two years, so it's, it's not something that has to wait 10 years for a charter review committee. Um, a few other things, and I think I've sent you information on this. I won't get into it because I don't think, at least I don't believe you got into it tonight about the um, vacancy of the county executive. Correct. But I did send yes, you did. the yep. notes that I had on that. Yep, thank you. Uh, another thing that I found was I, I didn't know about this when Mr. Olson spoke at the last meeting, but I did know that the Charter Review Committee in Frederick County had not touched the salary of the county executive. And I didn't know whether they considered it or not during their charter review process. The answer is they did, and they, re they rejected making any change. The reason, the main reason, <clears throat> re main reason being that they have a salary review commission just like we do, and that's how it should be changed. I also looked at all of the other counties as to what they have in their charters, if anything, about the county executive salary. Several of them do not have nothing. There's nothing, no salary provided. Those that do, it's basically, I'm very familiar with Howard County because I lived there when they changed to a charter form of government with an executive. That, that $18,000 salary that's in their charter for their executive is 1968. The salary now is $195,000. The point being that you don't have to do anything for the executive salary to be increased. And I can't find any example of any charter review committee uh, other than an initial charter review committee where they established the charter with the executive to begin with, where they've ever changed it. And you can see that from the numbers that I, that I gave you. Thank you. So I, I would suggest, frankly, that you reconsider that decision because that's something that is assigned to another commission under the charter and let that uh, process continue, which seems to be the practice everywhere else. Um, let me see if I had anything. Oh, yeah, I did have one other thing. Uh, it was mentioned at the last meeting by someone, I don't know who, that it looked like we were the only county that has <coughs> the requirement that after an election, the county executive must appoint or reappoint the department heads. Um, I happened to be talking to a friend of mine I've known since high school, practices in Baltimore County, and we talk about everything under the sun, happy days from high school and other things. <laughs> and I mentioned about what we were doing with that particular matter. And his response was, well, gee, we just changed our charter two year, two, uh, three years ago now, 2018. And they added the provision that after every election, the executive must appoint or reappoint the department heads. So think, think about that. I think there are arguments both ways. I understand the argument that it might make it harder to get somebody to apply for a job, but other counties do it. Uh, I, I think some other counties do it informally, even though it's not in their charter. Um, the other thing is, of course, you could still have a contract with somebody so that if he or she does not get reappointed, they've got something of what they call golden parachute two months salary, three months salary, or something like that. Um, and I didn't, I just listened to about taking a summer break. I think that might make sense just because, let's face it, you know, you, know, you, get, you get weary, but also because you're getting into this part of the charter where, frankly, it would make sense to sit down. I know this is a lot of reading, even if you leave Baltimore City's charter out of it, but I would look at the other charters uh, and see and see how they're organized. And in some cases, actually, they have much of their provisions in their codes. You don't have to have everything in the charter. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, th I think we're now at the point where that kind of research and study uh, it would bear a lot of fruit. Now, when you get into the basic structure and how many people are going to be on the council and stuff like that, obviously not. I mean, that's pretty straightforward stuff. So that's my suggestion to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
anyone else? Okay, um, really, truly, everybody, thank you very much. Um, great work tonight. Our next meeting, um, what was that date? Our next meeting is July the 1st at 5 o'clock. So thank you, everybody. We are adjourned.